people living in Konigsberg in what's now Russian Poland, hard to say which, they had seven bridges across two shores of the Pragel River, and there's two islands. One island here, an island over here, there's a bank over here, bank over here, and they've got it set up so that there's seven bridges. One, two, so you could go, you know, you could walk over this way. You could take a horse and buggy over to that side, cross over here, cross over here, and cross over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bridges. People argued, can you take a Sunday walk and just cross every bridge once? So I want to go out someday and just walk across this bridge, walk across this bridge, walk this bridge. Oh, I'll go this way this time. Walk across here, walk across here. Oops, I can't do it because I've already crossed those and I've left one. I don't care where I start and where I stop, but can I cross every bridge one time? People argued about it. Nobody was able to do it. Oilers in St. Petersburg working for the Tsars. And he hears about this problem. And up until then, people had said, well, we have to make a list of all possible ways to do this. We have to try here, go there. And in this wonderful paper that Euler writes, he says, trying to solve it one at a time doesn't tell us anything new. It's what today we would call a numerical solution. That might give you an answer, but it doesn't give you understanding. He's saying, mm, how do I do this? Huh? And then he says, think about ordinary bridges. Every time I walk across a bridge onto an island, I go from blue to polka dot land. Oh, blue to polka dot land. Polka dot land to red. The red shore o over to polka dot land. Oh, okay. Euler, rather than concentrating on the bridges, starts saying, look at the islands, look at the land masses. Let's label those and think about that. So he goes over and says, I'll label them. Oh, okay. I'll label what I call polka dotville. I'll call that A. I'll reach in my pocket, call this B over here. Over here, this side, let's call it C. And, oh, look at this. There's D. I, should, I shouldn't be walking in the water. I should just stay on the, in fact, I can't do that. I ought to just stay on the bridges the whole time. Keep me honest here, Brady. Um, oh, you stepped in the water. Oh, up, 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 up. Let's make it real simple. If I have nothing but a bridge going from C to D to B, they start from C to D. Bup, 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 bup. Okay, that's legal. So I have C, D. They go from D to B. Oh, it's D, B. Every time I get from one to another, from one landmass to another landmass, I can make a list of my travels. Oh, 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 oops, stay out of the water. Euler says, this means that if I have an even number of bridges, one, one, going to, into and out of an island, that's completely legal. I can go right through the island if I have two, or if I have four bridges, oh, I can come across here, come across here, back, over, and back. But an odd number of bridges, okay, I can come across here, and come across here, but I'm stuck. I go this way, turn around, but I haven't crossed this one. Alternatively, I could start on yellow, on D, walk this way, come back here, and then walk out here. Euler says, oh, if I have an odd number of bridges to any or from any island, I have to either start my walk at that location or end my walk at that location. Right now, island A has two bridges going to it. That means, oh, if I do not start on this island, I can just traverse it. 
And Euler goes on and says, and if I start on that island, I can go around blah, 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 blah and return to it. Even numbered islands, islands that have an even number of bridges going to them, I've got it made. This makes it possible for me to, to, to almost eliminate them from my thought process. And it works whether it's two, four, or even, or even six. Okay, got that one. Any land masses, any, any place that has a bridge connected to it, if it has an even number of bridges, oh, easy, piece of cake. If it has an odd number of bridges, then it's a special case. Clearly, if there's just one landmass that has an odd number of bridges, I can start on it, but I won't be able to get back to it to stop on it. But if I have two islands that have an odd number of bridges leading to them, I can start on one, traverse around, and then end on the other one. Now let's go back to what was really happening in Connorsburg around 1725. Seven bridges, remember? Wasn't arranged like this, it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, let me see. Let me see how I'm doing. This section, this the red shore, what I'm called what he calls C, I have one, two, three bridges from. Odd. Oh, it's an odd number. Odd number. Okay, how about D? Let's go over to it. Island D, one, two, three bridges. Oh, this is odd. How about the North Shore, B? One, two, three, odd number. What about Island A? One, two, three, four, five, an odd number. All of these land masses have an odd number of bridges leading to them. Euler says, uh-uh. None of them have an even number of bridges. All are odd. No matter where you start, you cannot traverse all those bridges. Along comes World War II. Bomber attacks. Horrible, just desperately horrible situation. Two of these bridges get destroyed. The town's devastated, but at the end of the war, there's five bridges left. So in a sense, today, there's no seven bridges of Conisburg anymore. Not only are there not seven bridges, the city of Conisburg doesn't exist. It's been renamed to Kaliningrad. It's a part of Russia today, where I think the Baltic fleet works out of there. And there's five bridges. Well, suppose you're sitting around in today's city. Could you do this? Well, before even trying, let's just note C over here, node C, this landmass of C, has two bridges today, an even number. Over there, landmass B, the blue one, has one, two bridges from it. What about island A? One, two, three bridges, an odd number. Island D, one, two, three bridges. Oh, thus, today, there is no problem. From what Euler said, we could start on either of the odd bridged islands. So I can start here and I'll end there. I have to choose a path that takes me from here to there. Okay, I'll go like this. Boop, 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 boop. Cross one bridge, cross two bridge. I'll walk across my third bridge backwards, walk across the fourth bridge forwards, back to where I started. But wait, there's one more bridge. Boop, 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 boop. I've traversed the entire path. Started there, ended there. Euler has told us that if there are exactly two islands that have an odd number of bridges, you have to start on one of them and then end on the other one. If there were three islands that had each had an odd number of bridges, no way. You couldn't solve the problem. However, if each island had an even number of bridges, Suppose, suppose next week there's an earthquake in the Baltic Sea and knocks down one, one bridge. Now, every landmass has two bridges going to it. And even I can figure it out. Oh yeah, I can traverse them all. Here's the first one, here's the second one. 
Here's the third one. Here's the fourth one. Traverse them all without any problem at all. Okay, suppose we only have three bridges today. Another earthquake. Another earthquake happens. Ah, another bridge falls down. Now, island A has one bridge leading to it, an odd number. Seashore, or North Shore B has two bridges leading to it, even. D over here, island D has two bridges, and C, where I'm standing, has only one bridge on it. In this case, Euler tells us, yes, we can still make a circuit th that crosses all three bridges, but we have to start on an odd-numbered place and end on an odd number. So, I'm on the odd-numbered C. There's only one bridge. One is an odd number. Okay, boop, 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 boop. Got to D. D's an even one. Oh, okay. I'll walk across this one. Boop, bop. And then I get to B and, oh, hot ziggity. I can walk across this. I end up on an odd-bridged island and I've completely traversed it. If all the islands have an even number of bridges, even everywhere, then we're even, Stephen, piece of cake. You can make this traverse, and everybody in the saloon in their Sunday walks, they're happy. What if there's only one odd-numbered island? Turns out you can't make such a thing. If I have, consider just one bridge. I have an island here. Oh, it's got an odd number of bridges. But, oh, here's a second island that has an odd number of bridges. I can't, you know, I could sort of send it up into the air, or I could have, you know, it goes out into the water and you walk the plank. But no, for a legitimate bridge, if there's one odd, there has to be another matching somewhere on the graph. So Euler showed that these, this bridge problem is kind of cool. So if you're in a saloon or you're going on a Sunday walk, it's nice to know, oh, I can or can't complete the circuit. Who cares? Well, you can't pick up a book on discrete mathematics. Discrete mathematics and its applications. Discrete mathematics and computer science. Discrete mathematics with ducks. You can't touch a book on this without turning to a page that has Euler on it. And sure enough, over here, the Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler solved this problem, blah, 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 blah. Euler invented graph theory. This is the first time, 1830, that graph theory has been thought of. And instead of analyzing this as a, let's walk across bridges, Euler recognized that, that connections from one place to another were central to a part of mathematics. Even cooler than that, Euler said, this is a geometric problem that has no triangles, it doesn't have hypotenuses in it. It's what he called a geometry problem of location. This was the beginning of topology. Euler's solution for this created graph theory. Euler's solution to this created topology. Oh, uh, all this from, from a guy who, oh yeah, I got a little bit of time to think about a problem that I heard about from people going on Sunday walks. That's brilliance. Thank you to Audible for supporting this video. Audible is the top provider of audiobooks and other spoken material with a dizzying number of titles covering almost anything you can think of. If you don't believe me, here are just seven bridge books you might enjoy listening to. Bridge of Spies, The Ice Bridge, Bridge to Terabithia, A Bridge Too Far, The Invisible Bridge, Bridget Jones's Diary, and my personal favourite on this list, The Great Bridge, the epic story of the building of the Brooklyn Bridge. And I've just said bridge a lot of times. If you'd like to listen to these or any other books from Audible, you can sign up for a free month trial which will include your first book for no charge. Audible's a great service, they've got a super app for your phone, and it's really easy to exchange a book if you end up with one that doesn't take your fancy. To give them a try, go to audible.com slash numberphile. That way they'll know you came from here. And our thanks to them for supporting this video.